Hi and welcome to Swiss Coast Daily Market Talk. It's Monday, September 23rd and this week begins with a sense of joy and bullishness in the market after the Fed announced the beginning of the end of its monetary policy tightening with a big fat 50 basis point cut last week. Then China also cut its reverse repo rate this Monday to boost liquidity in the financial system. So appetite is strong and risky assets are in demand. First of all, thank you so much guys for your nice messages last Friday. It was very heartwarming. I'm doing fine now, just no makeup, so don't be shocked. So as I was saying, last week marked the beginning of the end of the Fed's tightening cycle, which was one of the most aggressive tightening cycles of the central bank's modern history mind you and and well the only real tightening cycle that we really saw in the past two decades because I'm not really counting the mini attempt to tighten that we saw just before the COVID pandemic and well the Federal Reserve started cutting its interest rates by 50 basis points as you know a bold decision that raised many many questions out there across investment communities regarding the necessity of uh, coming up with such a jumbo size cut while the US economy, although slowing, well, hasn't necessarily given signs of plunging toward a recession. Now we understand that the idea here is to ensure a soft landing, yes, but but if instead the aggressive rate cuts and the message that it sent to the market that the Fed is on track to do more in terms of policy easing revised inflationary pressures in the US and in the world, then we could see this optimism fade quickly. And in this respect, the only one Fed member, Michel Bowman, thinks that last week's Fed decision to cut by 50 basis points could be a premature declaration of victory over inflation. The rest of the ladies and gentlemen at the Fed, well, they think that this was the right thing to do. So all eyes remain on the economic data. So this week, the US will be revealing its latest PMI figures the third estimate of a second quarter GDP growth, and the core PC index. So the US economy is expected to have grown near 3% in the second quarter with improving corporate profits but, but slowing price pressures, while the Federal Reserve's favorite gauge of inflation, the core PC index, is expected to show signs of stabilization a bit above the 2% monetary policy target. So the combination of good growth and slowing price pressures could eventually boost the optimism that the Federal Reserve will get this soft landing bet right and will send the US stocks to fresh all-time highs, a stronger than expected figure. On the other hand, could maybe, but just maybe, revive concerns that inflation in the US could come back very rapidly. But the good news here is that it will take at least a few months before well, the Federal Reserve's policy loosening decision affects the inflation data. And well, the fact that the Federal Reserve has started loosening its monetary policy and cutting the interest rates will temper the negative surprises as investors will keep hope that a softer financial conditions in the US and in the world will prevent bad news in terms of growth from getting worse. Because well, obviously not all news out there are good news, mind you. FedEx, for example, which is considered as a gauge of the economic health, well, it plunged 15% on Friday after reporting a bigger than expected drop in its second quarter earnings and after lowering its full year revenue forecast. But, but that news somehow came to well, confirm that the Fed is maybe, but just maybe, not wrong taking an early action to well, prevent the economic slowdown from getting worse. The time will tell, but it looks like we might be entering a sweet spot, a sweet period with the Fed loosening before, well, the bill comes in. Plus, the dollar yen is also giving signs of a rebound these days after the Bank of Japan refrained from hiking its own interest rates last week in Japan. Therefore, it looks like it's quite safe to think that the equity rally has room to extend. So the S&P 500 closed last week, it touched below an all-time high level and above the 5700 
100 level for the very first time. Now, many bulls eye the 6,000 mark for the year end, and the 6,000 mark is just 5% away. And also, lower funding costs should help closing the gap between the technology heavy S&P 500 index and its equal weight version. But, but that does not mean that the technology heavy NASDAQ, for example, won't continue its journey toward the north. It is just that the rally there will be well broader and benefit to other sectors as well and to smaller size companies as well. This is the expectation of the moment. Now, when I say other sectors and companies, well, oil and energy sector and oil and energy companies could eventually see the benefits of the reflation trade as well. So this was, remember, something that we were expecting to arrive with the prospects of interest rate cuts around the world, but oil prices plunge instead this year with rising worries of global economic slowdown and recession. But if growth prospects in the US and elsewhere improve, well, oil prices should improve as well. And this is why we saw the US crude jump above the $72 per barrel level last week, along with rising geopolitical tensions as well. But crude oil remains bid in the early hours of the new week, supported by the Federal Reserve optimism, the Middle East tensions, and maybe maybe a little bit by the People's Bank of China's decision to cut its 14-day reverse repo rate by 10 basis points and inject liquidity into its financial system to boost sentiment. So the Chinese CSI 300 index rebounded last week from its February lows, but, but the trend here remains comfortably bearish as the stimulus measures from China see a little enthusiasm in the absence of a deeper strategic change at the heart of the Chinese government, which well led to this terrible, terrible dive in its markets, which was certainly not necessary in the first place. But anyway, coming back to my energy story, well, you should know that there is a very interesting intersection between the big technology and its AI projects and energy markets, and that's nuclear. On Friday, Microsoft and Constellation Energy actually revealed a power purchase deal that would enable a restart of a reactor at Pennsylvania's Three Mile Island nuclear plant, a plant that actually experienced a partial shutdown following an accident in one of its two units in 1979 and stopped operating in 2019 altogether. So this plant or the unit one of this plant more specifically, will be back on track in 2028 to supply Microsoft's energy needs for 20 years to come because, well, there is simply not enough energy out there to meet both the growing electricity demand for our AI tools and the zero carbon emission goals. So it's needless to say that Constellation Energy's stock price jumped 22% on Friday after the announcement. Now, zooming out, uranium ETFs are also an interesting part of the AI play. So you should also maybe keep an eye on that space for your AI portfolios. Anyway, enough of the nuclear talk this week. Besides the U.S. growth and inflation data, investors will keep an eye on rate decisions from the Reserve Bank of Australia and the Swiss National Bank. So the RBA is expected to keep its rates unchanged at this week's monetary policy meeting, while the Swiss National Bank is seen cutting by another 25 basis points this week. Elsewhere, some major Eurozone countries will be revealing their latest CPI updates on Friday that could eventually hint at further cool down in European inflation boost the European Central Bank dose and prevent the euro dollar from drilling above the 112 psychological resistance. So this is all for this Monday. I'm Ipek Oskar Deşkaya and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments your reactions and your questions below as usual. Follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please, please don't forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that 
you enjoy them. So I will meet you again tomorrow. And until then, good day trading.